So one thing I've gotten kind of known for in the Linux and YouTube community is my videos on Trough and Groff. For a long time, I've used Groff, which is basically the GNU implementation of Unix's Trough program. Now, for a while, I've been playing with an alternative tool called Neatrough, which, like Groff, is an implementation of Unix's Trough, just with its own priorities and its own version of the implementation. And I've really come to like Neatrough and the differences in its implementation and I've come to kind of decide that I think it is the better of the two implementations for most use cases. Now, the biggest difference between the two is mostly their history. You see, Groff was implemented back in 1989, which makes it around 32 years old at the time of this recording. Now, Neatrough, on the other hand, has its first commit back in 2012, which makes it only nine years old. That is a huge time gap. Now, with that time gap comes a lot of foresight on things that Trough had as its shortcomings and things that it should have implemented from the start. Now, some of the changes that happened from the beginning of Groff's development was Plan 9 being released, which had an implementation of Trough with Unicode support, which was a big feature Groff missed out on until fairly recently, and their workaround was basically to use a preprocessor to make up for its lack of true support for Unicode. On top of that, there was also the implementation of TEX and what is now used by most people, LaTeX, which basically uses tech under the hood, which has a lot of great features for math and special formatting that Trough definitely lacked out on. And this is one of the big advantages of Neatrough because it takes a lot of the foresight and good ideas behind tech and implement them in a very Unixy, Trough-like way. This leads us into today's topic on why you should give Neatrough a try and why I generally think it's one of the better implementations of Trough, and for most use cases, it's probably the better one for you. Now, if you guys are interested in Trough, you're interested in Groff, and you're interested in Neatrough, any of those, then you guys should go ahead and like this video, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you guys get notified of my next video on these same topics. Now, one of the biggest reasons to use Neatrough is its substantially improved math preprocessor, NeatEQN. Now, while I still think the math output from Groff is pretty nice, it definitely falls behind when compared to tech. Neat EQN basically improves EQN from Groff in pretty much every way. Now, just for reference, here's a quick example comparing the two. Now, a few things you'll notice is that the square root looks substantially better. And on top of that, the brackets, uh, as well as a few different shapes, look a bit nicer. They don't really have this like curve and then a straight line and then another curve sort of look. That is one of the biggest things with Neatrough. You see, Neatrough, unlike Groff, actually adds support for text math symbols, and this is kind of how it's able to do these special shapes for different square roots. Now, another great thing that comes from NeatEQN is that it actually knows how to break up an equation. So if I make an equation that goes a bit too long and it goes off the page, normally in Groff, you would basically just end up with the equation going off the page. But with NeatEQN, it will try and break up the equations that way it all fits on one page. Now, NeatEQN is great, and I think I'll save some of the explanation for its own video because, honestly, it deserves the recognition. Now, the next reason to give Neatrough a try is the fact that it natively supports Unicode. See, up till recently, Groff basically didn't have any UTF-8 support, and the support it added was basically through a preprocessor that would convert the UTF-8 or Unicode symbols into the format that Groff could actually understand. Now, this led to a lot of complications when it came to working with preprocessors like Refer. You see, since Refer actually relies on a separate file usually for your bibliography, you often have to worry about the format that it's in. You see, if that supports Unicode in your actual bibliography, then you have to make sure that that is put through the preprocessor before it gets to trough. Otherwise, you're gonna run into some trouble. Now, with Neatrough, this is basically a non-issue since it has native Unicode support. Now, the next one is a pretty special one because I always get questions on that, and that is the way that fonts are handled in Neatrough compared to Groff is substantially easier. You see, I had to make a standalone video that's almost 10 minutes long explaining how to install a font in Groff, and I basically just told you to use a script to do it all for you. Really, you just use one program that comes with Neatrough if you install it the way that I'll show off later on in this video that basically handles all this sort of work for you as long as you give it the right command flags. On top of that, Neatrough even includes some really nice macros that can basically do this all for you. Once you give it the direct paths to everything that you need, you can basically have it all in one file instead of having to set up the fonts ahead of time, and that kind of can save you a few steps if that's your sort of thing. Now just to make things a bit more simple, I'm basically gonna show you how you can set this up and try it out for yourself. So I'm just going to git clone, 
this repository right here. I'll have the link to it in the description. And then once that's all cloned, there we go, that was pretty quick. We're just gonna CD into it and we're going to run make. And then that will give us all of the commands that we can run. We're gonna run make init and it will basically get everything set up. It will pull all of the appropriate repositories that Neatroff uses as well as download the fonts that we need. All right, now that it's done all that, we can just run make again to see all the commands. And the next one we're gonna to wanna to run is make neat. Now, once that's done, you're gonna basically have everything compiled as you'd need. And then all we gotta do now is we're just going to go ahead and CD into the demo directory. And then if I do a little LS, you'll see that there is a make file and a bunch of .ms and one TR file that you can just actually run make and this will basically compile all the documentation for the most part that you'll need for Neatroff. Now taking a look at the Neatroff start.pdf. Now taking a look at the documentation, there is a file that we have now created called neatstart.pdf. And this is what we're looking at. And this actually explains how to set up fonts and everything. Um, it's pretty simple actually. So since we're working with the demo directory, um, I'm not really gonna explain the exact details of how everything's working, because this is literally gonna be put in the middle of a video, but the concept is pretty simple. Basically, we've got to get a font that we want to install and get a file descriptor for it that Groff can, or not Groff, Neatroff can use to actually put it in the right locations and do everything properly. So what we're gonna do is I'm just looking at this font right here. You can't really see it because of my background, but it's all curvy and crazy. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to download that and then we're just gonna put it right at the top of Neatroff Make and then you'll see that it is right here. So I'm just gonna do unzip like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run this command. So this is basically using this executable that we compiled earlier and then using these flags, um, which as mentioned right here, basically if we're using a .ttf file, then we would use these flags and then it will put it in a dev utf which is basically the description for this font and we're going to call it butter um, so this might seem a bit confusing but once i just execute that and then we're just going to i'm not too sure if this is always necessary now that i think of it but i think because of the way that the demo files are created this is necessary in this situation so we're just going to uh, move this into um Sorry, we're gonna move this to fonts slash, and we're just gonna put that in there. And that should all work as expected. Now if I CD into demo, and then let's just edit test.tr. So I'm just going to go in here, and then we're going to do dot fp. Now you can say where you want it to mount the font, but we're just gonna do a dash and then give it the name that we're gonna call the font, which will just be R to replace the normal Roman font. And then since we called it butter, we're just gonna call this butter. Now, if I open that up, oh, I forgot to actually add something. Oh, and then you'll see right here, this is actually really small. It's just a PS, I don't know, plus 10, just to make it nice and big. There we go. And now as you guys can see right here, we get this nice curvy font. Now, alternatively, Neatroff also provides some macros that allow you to basically set up these fonts really easy, just giving it a directory that it can look in for the fonts, giving it um, basically this sort of layout where the font, like new font here would be our TTF file. And then it can basically set up the font for you, which is pretty cool. If that's your sort of thing, it's probably best if you want to reuse that font to basically do the same setup I did. Now this is pretty sweet and in fact I liked it so much that I recently rewrote my resume using Neatroff and even got to use Font Awesome which is a pretty general purpose font for doing different symbols and I actually used that within my resume and got the following results. Pretty cool I gotta say, definitely something I never really thought I'd be able to do with something like Groff. I'm sure you could do it if you were dedicated enough but in my case I am not. Now while all these fonts and the different settings are pretty great. They still are not as easy as I would like, but it's kind of something that you have to settle for with these sort of tools. Now this next one isn't really for me because I don't use a language that can take advantage of this, but a lot of you guys might use a language that is right to left and Neatroff actually supports that. So you can now use right to left languages like I believe Hebrew is or as 
often used by the actual author of Neatrof is Farsi. So if that's your sort of thing, then here you go, Neatrof is a great option, and you can't really do this with any other trough implementation. So that's pretty unique to Neatrof. Now moving on from that topic, another great thing that comes from Neatrof is its minimalism. Yeah, Neatrof is even more minimal than Groff. You see, Groff has a lot of added features that probably most of you guys won't use, like a while loop and return statements. Neatrof can pretty much do all this anyways just by using recursion, which might sound a bit confusing, but for the most part, you aren't really doing complex programming when it comes to a typesetting tool. On top of that, this simplicity means that the effort to learn Neatrof is substantially lower. Pretty much all of its documentation comes with it, and it's basically just a bunch of PDFs that are basically a good example that you can work off of. And on top of that, the rest of the documentation is taken care of by the classic Unix documentation that it links to in its own documentation. And I'll have that link down in the description just in case you guys are wondering what I'm talking about. This is great because one of the biggest criticisms of Groff is the difficulty in learning it because there's a lot to it. There's a lot that it adds. There's a lot of mismatched documentation that disagree with each other because it's hard to keep track of all of it because all the documentation is kind of everywhere. So with Neatrof, it kind of simplifies things a bit, makes the effort of learning it substantially easier. Now, another benefit to its minimalism is the fact that, like I just showed in this video, you can basically just download, compile all of it and run it right away, which is pretty nice because you can basically make a little repository and you don't have to have it installed at all times. This may seem like a pretty strange circumstance, but something that would come up is maybe if you wanted to compile the file from your phone, this is completely possible. It'll be able to run and do all of this easily using something like Termux. Now finally, my favorite, favorite improvement is the better integration with PDFs that you get. You see, with Groff, implementing URLs that you can click on, having references to different parts of the file that you can click on to jump around, also adding stuff like images, has basically always been a huge headache with Groff, especially when you try to put them all together because often different devices don't support the same thing. But with Neatrof, it simplifies things a lot more. The actual usage is very straightforward. The macros that come with it are very simple. Basically everything is great. <laughs> now I think I'll leave the full explanation of all these different things for their own video because this video is already starting to get a bit long. So just to save ourselves some work, I'm just gonna show off how you can use a URL for example. Now just going back to our demo directory, we're just going to open up test.tr and let's just delete all this because we don't really need it anymore. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the make file and then in here you'll see that the tr files are compiled with all this sort of stuff and you'll see that it's skipping over the macros. So we just need to add dash m post, which is basically the only macro we need for pretty much everything specific to a specific device. So what we're going to do is we're going to do backslash dar and then we're going to do post.url. And so dash m post is basically the actual macros that we're going to be using for this. And then we're going to give it the URL. So let's just go http colon slash slash google.com. And then we're going to go Google. There we go. And then when we compile, bam, double click on that. And we're opening the URL. Very very straightforward. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys found this pretty interesting seeing a different tool that can do a very similar job, but makes things a lot more simple and does things in a bit more minimalistic way than you would find with Groff. Now, one thing I do want to say is that I don't want you guys to get the impression that I think Groff is bad. I think Groff is still a great tool and it has its pros and its cons, but these are a lot of the big advantages of using something like Neatrof and probably why I'm going to be switching over to Neatrof full time at this rate. Now, before I say goodbye, I just wanted to thank Brian Jenks, who supports me through GitHub Sponsors. If you guys want to support the channel, then check out GitHub Sponsors or Patreon, which is linked down in the description. Anyways, guys, goodbye, and have a great day.